All right, if you take a look at this one, x minus the square root of 12 over x plus the square root of 8, first thing. You need to start recognizing numbers that can be broken down. Um, they just happen frequently. So um, 8, 12, 20, um, 32, 48, things like that. Um, 50 is another one that comes up quite often. The square root of 12, 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. And 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. These radicals in the problem are not simplified. Before we start worrying about the whole idea of there's a binomial radical structure in the denominator, I've got non-reduced radical objects in my problem. So for the square root of 12, I got a pair of 2's in, I get to pull 1, 2 out. For the square root of 8, I got a pair of 2's in, I get to pull 1, 2 out. This 2 doesn't have a pair, this 3 doesn't have a pair. So my original problem, rather than what they've given me, I'm going to write down x minus 2 times the square root of 3 over x plus 2 times the square root of 2. We always want our final answer to be as simple as possible. It's much easier to fix this now than it is to fix it later. The numbers get rather large if you don't, and we like to avoid large numbers if at all possible. Now, if we take a look, same issue as before is happening here. We have a binomial in the denominator. We have object 1 plus object 2. So I'm going to have to multiply by its conjugate. So again, I'm only focusing on the bottom here. That's what I care about is the bottom. I want the bottom fixed. So the current objects are x and 2 times the square root of 2. This is plus. I want this to be minus. Same two pieces. Change the sign. If I multiply the bottom times x minus 2 times the square root of 2, I have to multiply the top times x minus 2 times the square root of 2. And this time, instead of being a single object times a binomial, now I have a binomial times a binomial. This requires FOIL on top. But again, on the bottom, we, we invented that particularly, so we can just do the FL part of FOIL on the bottom. So if I FOIL the top, I'll use different colors to show where things are coming from. First times first is x squared. They're both positive, so you get a positive product. Outside term times outside term is positive times negative makes a negative. 2 times the square root of 2 times x is 2x times the square root of 2. I usually position variables like that in front of the radical instead of after the radical. If you write it like this, that isn't wrong, but just make sure your square root stops there. The x is not supposed to be underneath the square root part. So make sure that it's not showing up underneath. But again, I usually position it in front so there's no confusion. Next object, if I do inner times inner, I've got a negative times a positive, so negative. And I've got a 2 square root of 3 times x, which is 2x times the square root of 3. I'm going to do last times last. I've got a negative times negative makes a positive. And notice I've got a whole number radical times whole number radical structure. So whole number times whole number, 2 times 2 makes 4. For the radicals, 3 and 2 are primes that are different, so there's no way to get perfect pairs in there, right? So I can go ahead and multiply 3 times 2 makes 6. Okay, so there's the top done. Notice the four terms on top. Square root of 2 doesn't match square root of 3, doesn't match square root of 6, doesn't match no square root at all. So there are no like terms on top. So there's no way to add or subtract all those objects into anything prettier than that. That's what the top's going to end up being. On the bottom, we just have to do FL on this one, right? So first times first, x times x makes x squared. And last times last, positive times negative makes negative. And I have 2 times 2 is 4. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. So be careful when you have these number times the square root of number when you're multiplying them together. The outside number is multiplied to make the outside number. The inside is multiplied to make the inside. Square root times itself makes 2. What's 4 times 2? 
Okay. And that's it. That's the best that we can do. So how do you get four times two? So I'm doing two times the square root of two times negative two times the square root of two. That's what I'm doing in that product there, right? The two times the negative two made the negative four. Then I, what I have is the square root of two times two then, right? So the pair of twos inside becomes one two outside. Multiply by the negative four that's already there. But again, in essence, when you're doing this, you've got a square root times itself. The square root just disappears. So the square root of two times the square root of two is two. The square root of three times the square root of three would be three, and so on and so forth. So when you multiply square root times itself, it just becomes a non-square root. You can put that number without the radical.